Welcome to Syntax. On this Monday Hasty Treat, we're going to be talking about logging in, verification, magic links, 2FA, SMS codes, all that and more. Uh, But before we do, you're going to want to make sure you have a service like Sentry on your side to make sure that, well, you're covering errors because if people are logging into your software, it gets a little bit mysterious sometimes what's happening and you can attach which user is uh, actually having issues. That way you can look it up later. So head on over to Sentry.io forward slash syntax, sign up and get two months for free and solve your bugs with ease. What's up, Webs? All right. So let's talk about the different ways that you can verify that somebody has logged in. So this is not a show about two-factor authentication, but it's more about the different ways that Mm -hmm. you can log somebody in. And I I sort of got on this track talking about magic links and logging people in with magic links. And it's, it's funny how much developers hate magic links and how useful they are for the general public. So I thought, like, let's talk about the pros and cons of that as well as all the other ways that you can can log somebody in. So let's start with magic links. Magic links are when you log in to some sort of SaaS, you put your email in and it says, we've sent you a URL. You go ahead and go to your email, click that and come back and then you're logged in, right? You don't need to remember a password. And another pro of that is it's a really easy sign up flow. So if you want to get somebody to sign up for your application, what's easier? Enter your email or enter your email, enter a password, make sure you remember that password, all of this hubbub and, and jumble. It's just a, a much lower bar to getting people on board. Um, and then it also it, it cuts down on account sharing as well because if you need to click a link in your personal email for before you can get access to it, mm-hmm. ConvertKit does this as well. ConvertKit wants to charge you for every single user that is using it. So often when you sign into ConvertKit, it's like, oh, for security purposes, we want to check that it's actually you. We sent you a link. Make sure you go ahead and, and enter that link in. Yeah. I That is for security, but it's also because then you're not sharing passwords amongst your whole team and you're, you're paying the extra six bucks a month for every single user. Yeah. And OAuth can also do that too. I know we'll talk about that in a bit, but like that, that specific thing is like one of the reasons why I'm I'm so annoyed that I chose not to make an account with Claude before I started using it and sign up because with our chat GPT account, my wife and I just share a login for that. Yeah. But now it's like the Claude is tied to my Gmail, which isn't (laughs) a, a problem. But like when you log into Google services, it's more than just like, oh, now you have access to Google services. It's like they take over everything, right? Next time then you go to send an email or anything, it tries to send it from, or your calendar tries to add it to the wrong calendar. So for me personally, it's like, ah, you know, I I, I do like a email password flow to be available for that reason as a user. Yeah. But as a, you know, service provider or something like that, yeah, I could see that definitely being a, a pro. But yeah, Magic Links, I, I do think this is, one of the easiest ways as a developer to get up and running. It's one of the easier ones for your users, but as a developer, adding magic links into your app is one of the easier means of creating a login system. You don't have to worry about that same type of salting and hashing security you do with passwords. You don't have to worry about email verification. That's one thing you didn't mention. Like when you log in with an email and password, you're always given that now you have to verify yeah, your email, very, verify which is essentially email. a magic link itself that you then yes. click. It's like a second step. Yeah. So and we should say the way that it works is that the magic link has a, a, a ID in the URL that you click. And that ID will then, when you visit it, it will check that that ID is valid. It's been valid for a, a specific amount of time. And then once, once you actually visit it, uh, you do need to make sure that the person who's clicking it is actually the person because some email accounts will actually crawl the links in your URLs. Mm. And if the if the crawler bot actually visits the URL, they could accidentally verify even if someone doesn't click on it. Um, cons yeah. to magic links here are opening in the wrong browser. So you do it on an app um, or you do it in your on Safari, and then you click on your your email account has an in-app browser, and you click on it, it opens in the wrong browser. It doesn't necessarily work, and then you got to figure out how to copy paste it. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, yeah. Or yeah. somebody clicks on it on their phone, and and then it's trying to oh, I didn't log in on on desktop, so that that can be annoying. And probably the biggest one is it's slow. I hate 
that claw does this. Every single time yeah. you log in, it's it doesn't send you a magic link, but it sends you a a, a code, and you got to sit there on your hands, wait for their them to send the email, wait for the email to show up, wait for my email client to refresh and download it and open it and copy paste it, and it's just such a slow process. So the reason why developers hate it is because we are very good at using password managers, and that is so fast to use a password manager, but. I always am amazed that developers don't seem to understand that the general public does not. The general public uses yeah. their dog's name and then they add a number incrementing on the end of that every time they need to reset their password. That's how they do their passwords. And there's a reason why people get hacked all the time. It's because they use the same password across it every, every single one. And as a service provider, that's annoying because now you've got support requests of people getting hacked and then you got to deal with the support request amongst it. It's, it's really annoying. So I understand why magic links are so popular. Yeah, I, I do. I, I kind of waver on this one because as a developer, they're really easy to implement a lot of um, even like database ORM, super base, those types of things yeah. have it baked in. So it's like a one liner, right? Let me just uh, shoot that email off, click it. I like implementing this as a developer. As a user, I don't like it as much. But like you said, I think normal users probably do like it. There's also this other one called, I call it Magic Sessions. I don't know if there's mm -hmm. a name for this, but it's when you're waiting to log into something, like especially if you're in like the terminal or um, a big one is you're trying to log into an app on the TV, the TV will send you an email and you got to click on that link. And mm. you obviously can't open the link on your TV, right? So yeah. what this does is it just checks that you've actually clicked the link uh, anywhere and then it's it's authenticated you. So I oft, I really like that. I think I see how that can be less secure because if a hacker sends you a magic session link and you're like, oh, what's this? And you click it and then you've authenticated them. There's probably other things you can do there. Are they on the same IP address? Are you at least coming from the same city? There's a lot you could also do to to track against that. Yeah, and beyond just clicking links, there's also a code version of this too, where it asks you, uh, you have to be authenticated on your phone or on the website, and yep. that gives you a code that you can then type in on the TV as well, instead of like clicking I the love link that. to authenticate it. I love Jellyfin it. Anytime. does that. Yes. It's called like like auto login or magic login, something like that. And yes. that's every single one. Anytime any of these TV apps makes me input my email address and almost all of them have gone away from putting in your password on the with the remote but uh, they'll usually send you to like another website you have to put the code in first and then log in which is kind of like backwards you know but jellyfin does that as well where you can generate a code on a signed in device and then use that code to log into a not signed in event so that's another huge way to log into things is allow access from an already trusted device yeah, I, yeah I, I do think that's a great way to do it. You know, the classic email and password verification flow is you send your email, you send your password, that password gets salt and hashed, and that's a one-way hash in case people... People often think that when you have a password on a server, it's an encrypted uh, password, and that like encryption can be de-encrypted, but that's not the case. You hash it and you salt it, and then when somebody then enters their password to verify, it runs that through the same salting and hashing algorithm and then compares those two to make sure that those are the same, not not that you're able to Backwards ever reverse it. engineer that password. So uh, yeah. that's typically how it goes. But again, then you have to verify the email because when you sign up with an email and a password, Anybody can enter anybody else's email. So the reason email verification exists is so that it sends an email to your actual email, makes you click on a link that has a token that's stored in the database. It compares those two tokens. And if those are the same, then you're verified, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's a lot of extra work. But the email verification, I often like when they give me like like three days to verify it, you know, mm. where like you can immediately get using the application. Then you have a couple of days to, to actually click that because that's always such a annoyance where you're like, oh, let me sit here. Like, hopefully your queuing system isn't backed up where you, it takes you 15 seconds to send the, send the yeah. email because then you're, you lose people. But there is an issue there too, where if you don't verify the likelihood of spam is like massively. So the, we had to add verification and I like kind of resisted it because I was like, that's an extra step. Uh, yeah. But 
people just sign up things, a billion emails, spam them or whatever, never verify yeah. their email. So if, you, if you're having spam issues, you got to have that verification. Likewise, like the uh, magic uh, link is the email code where yes. likewise what they'll do is they'll email you a code you enter that code to log in because that code is typically valid for a, a much smaller amount of time than something like even a magic link or a verification email those are typically like all right we've sent it to you you have like a minute to enter this code yes. and if you do you <laughs> can get in we share a, a disney plus account with my sister-in-law and we know her. We know the username and password. But now, when you try sign in, it says we've sent you a code. So now you gotta like when you want to sign in to Disney Plus, you gotta like have them on the phone and be like, "All right, we're doing this," you know. And I know yeah. I told you never to send these single time codes over SMS, but this time it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I know. It's uh, it makes you feel like a secret agent, and I like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, I just went through Gmail. I was like, how, how many different ways are there to sign into a Gmail account, even once you know your username and password? Because often they'll, there's there's two factor to this, right? So passkey is, is obviously a, a popular one. SMS code, backup code is another mm -hmm. one. Like when you sign up, you get backup codes and you can print those off or, or store them somewhere safe. And then of course, there's your, your standard two-factor authentication using any of the apps or um big with gmail is just like you open it on you if you have the gmail app on your phone it will like ask you to approve it on a different device so that's kind of similar to the having a trusted device approve that yeah trusted device i, I do love how github does that anytime i want to do something on github it sends it to my phone enter the two-digit code yeah and, and it's just like it. two nine you know it's yeah. just two codes Two or codes. Two numbers. YouTube does that, or even Google does that. It often sends something to my YouTube app. It just pops open a little modal. I click yes. It usually works. I almost like never have issues with it. If it does work, then it's like kind of an annoyance uh, mm -hmm. if it's if it's not working. Uh, but you know, we also we didn't we briefly mentioned OAuth, but how that's working is again it's you have like a, a token, you're sending that token to a third party service, whether that is Gmail or, or, or Google or GitHub or something like that. GitHub says. Oh, yeah, uh, this person's logged in because you already have a session currently going over at GitHub yeah. and then says, do you approve of this other application using your software? If you say, yes, I do, then it sends a, uh, a session token their way that they can use to be authenticated via the API as a session with that service. And if you're authenticated with another service with a session token, that's almost as good as being authenticated as an email or whatever, because it's saying you are, you, you, you are yeah. this person, you're tied to some other re resource. And oftentimes at GitHub, you get a username, you get a photo along with that, you get a whole bunch of stuff along with that. So, um, you, and you, know, you get a lot of security with it as well, because yes, getting a GitHub or Gmail or, or Google account, like is very tricky and people are not people generally do not have multiples or in spammers it's it's much harder for a spammer to get a a Gmail or a Twitter account well maybe not Twitter but uh, <laughs> and and then that stops people from having multiple accounts or spammers being able to just create these hollow accounts that can they, they can use for abuse yeah, totally. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is either preventing abuse of your system or keeping your users safe. So user authentication is one of those things. And and by all means, if you want to roll your own uh, email and password authentication session system, it's not that tough. A lot of these things aren't that tough when you get into them, even doing a magic link or a magic code or any of this type of stuff is not hard when you dive into the, the fundamentals of it. So you don't always have to use a service for this stuff. You can certainly implement some of it on your own if you'd like. All right. I think that's it for today. Uh, I thought it was interesting to talk about this. I don't even know what you call this, but like second step verification. It's not all two-factor authentication, but it's, hey, we want to double check who we think you are. And these are some nice ways to, to go about that. If you're out there and you have an aversion to any of these, let us know. Do you like magic links? Do you hate magic links? Which of these authentication methods are your favorite? Um, if you if you approach a site and it only has Gmail OAuth, are you not going to use it? So let us know what you think. I, I'm down to hear exactly, like because I'm in my bubble of what I like, but I would love to, yeah. to know what other people like and dislike, especially because I build a lot of auth systems. I've been noticing a lot of companies 
not giving you username password recently. It's you can mm. only sign in with OAuth. Or and, a phone uh, number, just a phone number. Yeah, yeah, phone number as well, which I, I see that as well because they can market, they can text message you and, and get good marketing out of that. You know, no one reads their email anymore. So sending a text is where it's at. Yeah, for sure. Wild yeah. world. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. We will catch you later. Peace. Bye.